there are no walls in the ocean. This is what Bailey tells her friend Destiny in the movie Finding Dory. And this is where my story begins. My story is about dolphins and aquariums. Although dolphins live in water and we don't have much chance to see them, there are a lot of stories between dolphins and people. I bet many of you have seen a dolphin before and you will all agree with me that dolphins are cute and intelligent. Besides cats and dogs and other domesticated animals, dolphins are already described as our good friends. Dolphins keep surfers safe from sharks. Dolphins help people who fall into water. Dolphins seem so different from us, yet so similar, that the government of India actually accept the claim that a dolphin is a non-human person. I've worked in wild dolphin research, and therefore, I've seen how a wild dolphin behaves. They are the dolphins you can see in Hong Kong, the Chinese white dolphins, also called the Indo-Pacific humpback dolphins. I've worked with them for almost four years, and they continue to surprise me every time when I see them. Sometimes they're feeding, sometimes they're socializing with friends, sometimes they're just resting or chilling, playing. Maybe many, many people may think that they all look the same. Indeed, but with a closer look, every dolphin has a unique character. Some of them are more playful, some of them are shyer, and they are emotionally complicated as well. Sometimes they want to get close to our boat and play around us. But sometimes they just slap their fluke on the water surface and almost like saying, go away and don't bother me anymore. Every time when they get close to our boat, I realize they're looking at us. And from the look in their eyes, I'm sure they are thinking something about us. I like to imagine think, uh, dolphins are thinking about my, myself. <laughs> Something like, hey, it's you again. Why not come down and play? Or like, hey, you weird human being. I hate you so much. Don't dare you come down and I will bite you. But the above is not only for my imagination. Although their intelligence is still controversial among scientists, we basically agree Dolphin's IQ is comparable to a six- or seven-year-old human kid, and that is using our standard. So very, very possibly, we are still underestimating their intelligence. And you can see a much-folded cerebral cortex mean that, means that their brain can process a lot of information at a time, and that results in different culture and a complex social structure in different dolphin's populations. Here, I have to introduce one of my friends to you. She's Rupi, or CH34. We first discovered her in 1997, and you can see there is a permanent injury on her dorsal fin, and that is the result of entanglement in fishing net. And she gave birth to two calves before, but unfortunately, both of her calves died because of unknown reason. During the death of her second calf, she was so depressed and she couldn't really accept the fact that her calf was dead. She kept the carcass of her calf floating and she hoped her calf would breathe again. She didn't let go for a week and she gave up eating because she had to keep an eye on the dead body. And despite not being physically injured, she became so skinny, and we were afraid that she would die because of starvation. And finally, after a week, she let go of her baby, and her life moved on. It is always, for me, a very sad story to tell, but we were amazed that dolphins also uh, grieve for, for their love, and this behavior is only found in a few species of animals, including elephants, some primates, and myself, like all of you here, human beings. Dolphins are facing a lot of threats from every corner on this planet because of us, because of our activities. They have to live with threats like pollution, boat traffic, and also coastal development. But every time when I see a dolphin, 
I believe the most important element in their lives is basic freedom. The freedom to do anything they want to do, the freedom to go anywhere they want to go, and to live as the elegant and lively predator as they are born to be. When I was in primary school, I first I met my first dolphin in my life. Like most of you here, maybe, I met my first dolphin in an aquarium, the Hong Kong Ocean Park, and I remembered I was the lucky one that I was allowed to touch the flipper of a dolphin, and that. Passion has driven me, and I finally was employed as a staff in Hong Kong Ocean Park. <laughs> But after I started working in there, I realized things were not quite as I, as I expected. The dolphins there are not happy, as the Ocean Park is telling us, and what they are doing is not real education and conservation. Can you imagine if someone put you in a room with no door for the rest of your life? I'm sure life will be miserable if you if you cannot go anywhere you want to go. And dolphins always have to listen to loud music during daytime, and also loud voices of people. This is what dolphins always hear every day during daytime, and for an extremely acoustic animal like dolphins, long time exposure to noise will result in stress, hearing, hearing damage, or even psychological disorder. And they are always starved, as the trainers will never feed them enough, because otherwise they may not listen to orders. And they use much energy to perform acrobatics. Movements that are not natural to them, like high jumps, tail walking, or even taking a small boat to satisfy the desire of visitors. For us, it's entertainment, but for them, it's all hard work, and will cause fatigue and frustration. And then after a long day, they are left unattended at night. No one cares about what they need, and what they only have is a tank, like a bathtub size for them. For Chinese white dolphins, we recently found out that they are more active and produce a lot of sound at night. That proves that we are still missing a lot of information about dolphins. So, what if captive dolphins actually need more attention at night? But sadly, what they can do in their tank every night is swimming circles or floating motionlessly in their tank, which scientists call that stereotypic behavior. Which is meaningless behavior, and is only found in captive animals because they are so bored, and they are psychologically unhealthy. Do you know how captive dolphins are captured from the wild? Most of the dolphins you can see in an aquarium in China are captured from Japan and Russia. They use a method called drive hunting to capture them. They use、uh, they spot a group of dolphins in the ocean. They follow them with motorboats, like bent on metal rods, to drive them into shallow cove, and then trainers from all over the world will come and examine the captured dolphins to see which are the most suitable for performing, which are usually young females. And after the prized show dolphins are taken, the rest of them will be slaughtered and sold for meat. Because、uh, because of this. Every dolphin you can see in an aquarium, each costs the lives of hundreds of other dolphins in the wild, and this will possibly affect the sustainability of some wild population. A recent study shows dolphins also have long-term memories, and they can remember their friends even if they are apart for 20 years by recognizing the unique whistles of different individuals. For the captured dolphins. The sole survivors of their community will carry this heartbreaking memory for the rest of their life. They also develop other health issues. The chronic stress weakens their digestive system, and they don't get enough nutrients because all they get, all they can get for food, is a few species of frozen fish. 
they, as a result, they have to take a lot of medicines, like uh, antibiotics and supplements, like vitamins, to support their health. And they also develop teeth problems because they always chew on wall or other objects in their pool, which is another stereotypic behavior. All the health problems suggest the reason why captive dolphins usually have shorter lives than wild dolphins. The average lifespan of the dolphins in Hong Kong Ocean Park is less than three years. Compared to their counterpart in the wild, bottlenose dolphins usually live up to 30 to 40 years or even longer. The portrayal of the lives of captive dolphins, which Marine Park creates for the visitors, is a misrepresentation of the lives dolphins have in the wild. And that's why captiv captivity industry always fail to educate and to promote conservation because the story they are telling you is not the story of wild dolphins, but only a fictional story of the captive dolphins, which only tells us, tell us what, to, what we want to hear. And because the industry conceals the cruelty in this sugar coating, but with the very act of capturing and confining them, aquariums will never be the best classroom for kids to learn about animals because it is contradictory to the purpose of wildlife conservation. Wildlife conservation is to preserve the lives of animals and, to, and their natural habitat. And the notion that seeing the animals in captivity that will help the dolphins in the wild is wrong. How can cruelty and cruelty? But then my friends ask me, without aquariums, how should we learn about marine animals? And the easiest way will be going online, see some documentaries, and read some books. And here are more alternatives to dolphins' captivity. The facility itself, like the pool, can be turned into sanctuaries to keep injured dolphins or live-stranded dolphins. And the main objective of keeping the dolphins is to rehabilitate and reintroduce them back into the wild after they recovered, but not keeping the animals in the facilities for entertaining the masses. And the other area of aquariums can become museum-like facility to show carcasses of marine animals. And the best part of doing this is people can still see the real animals in front of them. It's very much like when you go to a museum to see the fossil of dinosaurs. Kids will always fall in love with dinosaurs, even they will never see a real one. And because there is no live animals there, the industry can tell everything true to their visitors and carry out what they claim they are doing to educate the public and to promote conservation. They can also try to use virtual reality to let their visitors to have an under underwater experience. <laughs> virtual reality has become very popular in recent years, and people can feel they are submerged in the ocean to see different creatures. And this also don't require any live animals, so they don't have to always replace the animals in the exhibits. The only cause is the expense of the maintenance of those high-tech facilities. So now, what do you think about aquariums? When I look back, I realize on the day when I see my first dolphins, I didn't know what type she was, I didn't learn where she lived in the ocean, and I didn't build any connection with her. But yet, through these years, I found the key to end this cruelty. We are the source of demand for this industry, and we are paying money to buy tickets that will eventually go into hunters' hands. So we have the power and responsibility to end this cruelty. So from now on, don't go to any of the aquariums that keeps dolphins and other marine mammals, and also tell your friends and family not to go. You can also write letters to the, indus to the industry or even the government to tell them what you want to do.
what you want them to do. With all of, all of our help, we can solve this problem and break all walls for the dolphins. Let me end my part with a quote from the movie, The Cove. We are their greatest threat and their only hope. Thank you and enjoy your day. Thank you, thank you, Tyson. I can ask you in Chinese. Can you? Can you? Recently, in Guangzhou, there is such a water tank. In our news, we often see it, and I think you should see it, that there is such a water tank in the world's most bitter tank. Yes, yes. You may know this thing. So, in such a water tank, in such a living environment, we, as you said, we can we can choose not to spend money. What can we do? What can we do as citizens? I think that this problem is the biggest challenge in education. Because... Sorry. You can speak Chinese. Yes, I can speak Chinese. I can speak Chinese. I can't speak Chinese. I think this problem is the biggest challenge in education. Because... 即係我哋呢一，雖然我哋呢一代嘅人可能慢慢誒、呃、都，即係我哋其實好耐之前已經習慣咗水族館呢、這、一個誒、呃、工業喺我哋社會存在，但係誒、呃、我哋點可以改變未來？就係、是、靠我哋下一代嘅小朋友去學識誒、呃，當佢要誒、呃、學習。誒一種一啲動物嘅知識嘅時候，其實水族館唔會係一個好好嘅選擇啦。但係因為我哋呢一代嘅人已經習慣咗呢個觀念，係比較難去扭轉嘅。咁就唯有靠我哋而家，即係大家聽完我講完之後，明白咗之後，同翻、呃、身邊可能有,、呃、有長輩嘅小朋友，或者自己有小朋友都好，同佢哋講，咁先係最有效嘅方法，喺未來可以改變呢一個事實。謝謝，謝謝 Tyson。